Oh, so you want to go back? Why? Let's talk about reconciling with an ex today on Life Starring Dead. <music> Everybody, welcome back to another episode of Life Starring Deb. You know I'm excited to see you here today, and I thank you for tuning in each week. If this is your first time, go ahead and hit that subscribe so that you won't miss any future episodes, and you can go back and check out some of the ones that I've already done. So the last time we were together, I talked about reconciling with a friend. And I had some friends that called and said, like, you know, yada, 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 reconciling with a friend, whatever, whatever. Talk about reconciling with an ex. And I was like, oh, yeah, okay, let's talk about it. So today we're going to continue the episode on reconciling with an ex. And we're going to dive into it a little bit and talk about the reasons why it's a good idea or reasons why it's not such a good idea to reconcile with an ex. So... The first thing you want to do before you even consider reconciling with an ex is asking yourself, why did you break up in the first place? See, if you don't deal with the reasons why you broke up in the first place, those same issues will resurface. But, you know, I know how it is because, you know, the heart wants what the heart wants. And what do I mean by that? I mean, you know, we can listen to an, a record that we used to like to listen to with our ex, or we can go to a restaurant that we used to eat, or we can watch a movie, you know, movies all the time. Those movies where the couples break up and get back together and they live happily ever after, they make us feel like, that's what I want, that's what I want, and your heart, you know, will start to beat a little faster and you start to reminisce because the heart is emotional. And sometimes emotions are hard to control because the heart wants what the heart wants. But then there's that old mind. The mind is practical and logical. And that mind will tell you, you know, are you sure? You sure you want to go back there? You know, remember what happened last time? It will remind you. It's more logical thinking where you got that warm and fuzzy feeling with the emotions. You get something totally different when that mind enters in. And sometimes the mind and the heart don't gel. But I don't want to be a Debbie Downer, <laughs> okay? I don't want you to think that getting back with an ex is a bad thing because there are some benefits. There are definitely some benefits to getting back with your ex. And one of those benefits is that it's familiar and comfortable, right? You know, like a old pair of jeans, you know, you, you know how it feels, you know how it looks. You don't have to go through the different stages of dating. Uh, because it's familiar. You don't have to get to know the person because you already know the person. Also, it's it um, it makes you feel like you have history. You have history with the person because, you know, you laugh at the same jokes. You have those inside moments of things that only the two of you have shared together. You just kind of makes it makes you feel like you can just pick up where you left off because you have history with that person. And also there's there's nothing wrong with second chances. I mean sometimes what happens is after you break up and you've been apart for some time, you start to think that, you know, maybe you should have stayed together. Sometimes, you know, you start to appreciate the person when you're no longer in that relationship. And that will make you feel like, maybe I need to give that person another chance. So I can't just talk about the benefits of getting back with the next. 
I have to also deal with some of the risk that you take when you get back with next. So a repetition of the issues because they were not resolved have a tendency to resurface. And if you haven't dealt with those issues and they resurface, what can happen is it can cause another breakup. And then there you are back again within a relationship, out of a relationship, because you haven't dealt with the issues that broke you up in the first place. Also, it holds emotional baggage. Those emotions, those emotional baggage uh, from the past uh, that seem to keep lingering on. You're still thinking about the things that have happened that are emotional. And emotional baggage hurts. And no one wants to go back to the hurt and pain that the emotional part of the relationship had on us. And then though, there are those trust issues. Trust, trust, trust. If you didn't trust the person before because of whatever it was that happened, those trust issues may still be there. And so everything that the person does that doesn't feel right, or maybe the person doesn't do it the way that you think, and you know, why did it take him so long to call me back? You know, he said or she said they were going this place and it doesn't take that long. And, you know, why does the phone keep going to, you know, voicemail? And why does he always take the calls outside or whatever? The trust issues, trust issues. If you had trust issues before and you haven't gotten help with those trust issues, now that you are trying to reconcile, those trust issues will not go away. Because there'll always be that, that thing like, oh, no, it don't feel right. How can you move forward in a relationship if you have trust issues? And lastly, what I want to say about the risk is you risk meeting someone that you can be more compatible with, like a missed opportunity. You can't very well start up a conversation or get to know someone else while you're still trying to reconcile with an ex. So that could be a potential missed opportunity. I mean, maybe your person is not the person that you broke up with. Maybe your person is over here waiting for you, but you can't go that way because you're trying to go this way and backwards with an ex that you broke up with. Now, what I feel is if the person is alive, there is a strong possibility that you can reconcile. I mean, I have definitely seen it done in the past where people have broken up for a period of time and they do end up back together and they do just fine. Uh, but I will say this, you're going to have to ask yourself the question and you might have to ask that ex the same question. What if the ex doesn't want to get back with you? Okay. So, you know, as much as, you know, you're both alive and well, you might be dead to the person. The person may feel like, no, you know what? I don't want to go back. And if your ex is telling you in his or her actions or the way they speak with you, or not returning your phone calls, or whatever the case may be, then that is an indication that the person, your ex, does not want to get back together with you. And you're going to have to accept that because, I mean, they may try to be subtle in telling you, but if they are not as enthusiastic as you might be about putting your relationship back together or getting counseling or whatever it takes to get back together, then they're trying to tell you, I don't want that. However, there is a way to reconcile. You know, you can decide what type of reconciliation do you want? Because sometimes we break up and we don't even speak. 
And we've had a lot of history together. We've had a lot of laughs. We had a lot of good times together. And you want that. But you can get that as a friend. You can reconcile with your ex and be your ex's friend. You don't have to make that person your lover again. You can reconcile as a friend or you can reconcile as a lover. But you have to decide what type of reconciliation will be the best decision for you and that person. A friendship, lovership. Sometimes just being that person's friend, being back in that person's life as a friend is the best decision that you can make. As long as you do that in the right state of mind and you're not trying to sabotage any type of relationship that your ex might be trying to have with someone else. Like, okay, be friends, but don't call all the time and text all the time, especially if that person has let you know that I am trying to move forward, I am trying to move on. And they may even say, I'm dating again. And don't get mad at that because again, you guys broke up. So that let both of you have the freedom to go out and meet and date someone else. So so don't sabotage the friendship by trying to be more than that, especially if your ex is saying, I don't want it. So what I'm saying is, if you decide that you want to try and get back with an ex, what I want you to do is be patient and understanding of both partners. Don't expect that just because you say, I want to get back together, that you're just going to get back together. You need to be patient with that and understanding if the person may want to get back with you, but just not sure yet. So don't rush it. You also have to be willing to put in the work. And it's going to take work because people break up for a reason. And so you've got to work that thing. You've got to work it out. You've got to talk it out. You've got to deal with some of those past hurts and pain that may make you uncomfortable. But that is part of doing the work. And understand, it's going to take some time. Depending on how deep the issues were, it's going to take some time. So don't rush the process. And this is when you might want to get a counselor or someone that can sit down with the both of you and help you work through those issues that you had. You also want to create some boundaries. Just because the person is familiar, just because you know the person, doesn't mean that you should not set up boundaries. Don't do too much too soon. Don't get intimate right away because you already know. Once you put intimacy, I mean real intimacy into it, that clouds everything. So take your time. Set boundaries. Don't just be so eager to get back in without thinking it through and thinking it through along the process and reevaluating what is happening. And asking yourself questions. Is the per does the person appear to be changed? Does the person really want this? I mean, you've got to ask yourself the hard questions. And don't ignore the red flags because there may be some. There may be red flags immediately. But because we want what we want, sometimes we ignore the red flags and we think, oh, that's nothing. Oh, yeah, I'm used to that. That's, that's just who he is or who she is or whatever, those could be red flags that things have not progressed as much as you think that they should have progressed. And definitely, you want to ask those same questions on yourself. You know, have are you moving too fast? Are you trying to get the relationship off to a good start? Because, you know, summer's coming or spring is coming or the holidays are coming or whatever, whatever, so you're rushing. Don't do it. Take your time. Because this time around, you want to make sure that you're setting yourself up for success, not setting yourself up for two or three months later into the relationship, you realize this was a bad idea. I never should have did that. So that's today's episode. And listen, guys, I really hope that 
you find your person, whether it be the person that you used to date or used to be with, or whether it's a new person. I pray that your person is preparing themselves right now for you. So that's it. Go ahead and like and subscribe and make some comments. What, have your, what has your experience been with reconciling with an ex? Put it in uh, the comment se section and let's talk about it. So until we meet again, be good to you. Take care.